Um, today, we are, this is um, currently, it'd be 24 weeks out from the show that we are shooting to do. Um, what's up, man? And, um, fuck, what was I was going to say. Look, he oh, lost yeah. his train of thought. Yeah, so, yep. Don't forget about this. But also, look, look at how many carbs are, carbs are in there. here. Look how many carbs are in here. You're my scared of carbs? On the bottom. My carbs are down. Yeah, but you got to see them. This is 450 grams. That actually looks pretty light for a guy your size. Shut up. <laughs> this is the hostile tracksuit. This is the hoodie. These, the hoodies and the tracksuit uh, bottoms we came out with are really, really good quality. Love these. It's got like the super thick rubberized logo right here. This is the blacked out hoodie. Um, these are still in stock. Um, it's embroidered down here. Um, definitely one of my favorite pieces we've came out with. But uh, super warm. I was wearing this at the Packer game yesterday, and I was sweating the entire time. I didn't even have my jacket on. But anyway, um, all right, so currently 24 weeks out from the show that we are shooting for. It's been since 2021 since I last stepped on stage. Um, woke up this morning. I, last week I was 250. I'm back to 260 now because I was sick for eight days straight. So that sucked. So last week I was training with Devo. We were getting back into the groove of things. It was just, it was a bitch with my endurance congested in the chest. We trained legs during legs because my endurance is so shit. Finally this week, weight has been getting right back up there. Regain that fullness, but still just chilling in a health phase right now. Gonna be taking you guys through my push A workout of my split. So we're gonna be hitting, uh, I believe, it's gonna be chest, delts, I think biceps, or it's gonna be triceps in there. I'm gonna get, write everything down on the whiteboard for you guys beforehand, but pre-workout meal right now is 450 grams of rice, 200 grams of 93.7 ground turkey, and then gonna smash this, wait an hour, um, get some bash mouth in me, and then uh, show you guys what I'm gonna be taking for my uh, pre-workout and intra-workout stack. But that's what we're gonna be running through today. Gonna be talking, giving you guys value, giving you guys knowledge. Um, hopefully you'll learn something, and it's just going to be uh, raw, uncut, chest workout, delts, and biceps and triceps. I gotta look at my program, what is going to be hit on there. Brett, wanna say anything? <laughs> train hard, fuckers. Yeah, train hard, fuckers. Anyway, I'm gonna down this. You guys will see me in a bit, in like 0.1 seconds. All right, people, so mixing up the pre-workout now. This is what we got going down. Excuse my voice, I'm still recovering from being sick. Roaring grape bloodshot. Great fucking flavor. Oh, it smells so good. Um, low key, the smell kind of reminds me of like some grape flavor, like vape juice that I would use to like to vape in high school or some shit. But it smells so good. Hold on, I gotta dig down in this one. This is a brand new tub. So, two scoops of this, and oh, I'll do like maybe two and a half. Yeah, we'll do we'll do two and a half. This is Pico Two. So Pico Two, I love Pico Two. It uh, increases the I think it's like oxygen capacity, you know, energy utilization, but very very good for endurance. Beta alanine because I honestly like the uh, the itchies. <laughs> um, I don't really notice a whole lot of a difference in my training from beta alanine. I just like it. Maybe it's a placebo effect. But citrulline, I'm gonna add citrulline to this as well. So pop in another three grams. Oh, I gotta get my intra workout. Intra workout combo. I'm about to put you guys on. All right, so I am a sucker for Inch R3, especially the flavors of Inch R3. But I'm also a sucker for the unflavored CDX in my Inch workout. Now, that's Bloodshot. So we got um, Pineapple Rush Intra. All right, so we're gonna do one scoop of this because I have two scoops of unflavored uh, CDX in here. Anyway, so we're doing one scoop of, oh shit. I just put pineapple in a grape flavored fucking pre-workout. It was supposed to go in. Ah, oh, damn it. So I already had unflavored CDX in here for my intro workout. I'm adding Pineapple Rush to it. And then I'm also gonna add my EAAs to it. Um, but I'm adding the orange pineapple flavor because this this combo right here, fucking deadly, insane. Great combo. Um, so I'm gonna be doing a, about a scoop and a half in my intro workout of Silo 9. And then, oh man, I'm not, a, I'm not looking forward to mix these fucking Flavors. This is not gonna be good. Oh, what? Ooh. Yo, Loki. This is not bad. Really? Grape and pineapple. Try that. Dude, Loki. That's good. Dude, Loki. That's good as hell. Try this. That's actually pretty good. Okay. I'm going to. Uh, down this, wait about 15, 20 minutes, and then I'm gonna go head to the whiteboard, write down, show you guys what I'm gonna be doing for this push session. We got the old whiteboard out here now. I wanna show you guys what we got going on here. These movements right here, these are my preparatory movements. All right, so we got single arm lat pullover um, on the cable machine. Now, lats are very important, they're very important stabilizing movement, but also a single arm pullover. The reason why I started a single arm lat pullover is because it's just another area 
within my programming that we're increasing the frequency of my lat training, okay? But also too, we're having, if down here, we're getting depressing. You know, when I have warmed up lats and warmed up shoulders, I press so much better, okay? I don't have any issues, like issues with my shoulders, but I press better when things are warmed up properly. Blood is in my upper body really well. Two by 10 to 15, one by 10 to 15 for single arm cross body pullovers. These are the same thing as this, but slightly different. You just change the position of your body. Cable Y rays, this is going to be for the delts. Um, two by 12 to 15, failure. Now, if you look, failure, failure, failure. Failure, failure, everything, failure. I'm not training like a bitch. Everything, I'm just pushing to the max um, until I can't push no more. That's how I like to train, that's how I've always trained. Um, I make sure to keep my form good where it needs to be good in terms of making sure I'm not gonna get fucking injured. Sometimes there's those days where you just wanna grip and rip it, sling some shit around. Personally, I like to control it a little bit more, but there are times where I'm like, all right, I'll have a little bit of that body English, all right? Incline dumbbell press is the first exercise. First set, it's supposed to be one set of six to eight, but the heaviest dumbbells we got here are 125s, and I can press those for more than six to eight, so I wrote in one by eight to 10, dropping the weight down for my second set a little bit after I recover. Um, it's still going to failure, but one by 10 to 15, is a little bit higher reps there. Flex leverage incline. That sounds weird, incline flexor of leverage. Flex, leverage, incline, play loaded machine. It's converging incline press, love that machine. Um, then we got two sets of eight to 12, decently heavy here, failure on each, obviously. Then, third exercise for chest. We got pec deck, two by 12 to 15, failure again. Not training like a bitch, I'm not leaving anything in the tank. Third, we got pec deck, okay. So we're 24 weeks out right now, this food is still high, okay. So And also too, I'm still in a health phase being at 24 weeks out, but I have plenty of other variables within my programming, within my day, that give me plenty of energy um, to have high training performance. I don't have an excuse to not train fucking hard, not train heavy, you know, because uh, even regardless of me being in a health phase, okay? So everything we're doing, we're fucking pushing to the limits here. So regardless of me being on prep, obviously 24 weeks out, still, you know, a ways away from the show date, we're still from the beginning of prep to the end of prep, training with max intensity, setting the tone, before prep even starts. I've been prepping before this show for the past two years. My off season's to prep. Every fucking training session, I'm thinking to myself, okay, yo, is this going to be the set where you know I don't get that first call? Or is this, maybe this is the set where I don't build that fucking thickness in my upper chest? So that's what I'm thinking about. That's the mindset that I've had ever since I got off stage for my last show. Prep starts before prep. Overhead cable cross extensions, otherwise known as katana extensions, two by 10 to 15. Rear delt flies on machine row. Probably gonna do a little bit more triceps here and definitely do some more delts at the end just to spam those lateral delts full of blood. But this is what we're doing for today's workout. Um, Pre-workout is definitely already hitting right now. Got my intro workout in here, but we're gonna start with our preparatory movements, the lats and the Y raises, and then get right into the main chest workout. All right, so when I'm doing these, I'm still warming up right now. But when I'm doing these, I don't want this weight to pull my shoulder all the way up here like that. I lose tension on my on my lats. Even though it's not a lat day, I still want to target my lats because this is one of the ways I'm increasing frequency, okay? So my shoulder never gets pulled forward like this. I'm keeping my shoulder depressed, so my lats always engage. So I'm thinking about taking my scapula and pulling it down and tucking that, or like packing that lat. And just try to get this right here as close to my side as possible. The reason I'm supinating is because one of the prime actions of the lat is rotation at the shoulder. And if I can rotate at the shoulder to supinate, then it's going to be a lot easier for me to feel my lat and not have my teres and rhombus take over. First working set on here.
Oh, fuck. Oh, oh my god, I'm pumped as fuck already. Anyway, I love these. These are these are fantastic. You know, a lot of people are gonna be like, hey, you're expending a lot of energy going into your main movements or chest. Yeah, I guess it could be. Never really had an issue with it. Um, it's part of my program. I'm listening to my coach. And honestly, too, I tend to notice the trend of doing things like this first to increase frequency in my lats is leading to much better overall physique development. But also, I've never really had the feeling of it taking away from all my bigger uh, bigger exercises. So it's just how I do it. You do you. Left arm here. Oh my god, I'm pumped. Holy shit. Like a golf ball. Cross body. I did my two sets of <coughs> single arm cross body now. So we're doing cross body. Instead of being directly forward, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna keep my arm kind of in the same path, but I'm gonna tilt my body about a 45 degree angle. All right, keep my chest proud still. Now the entire premise here is to keep pulling that upper arm into your hip and really think about wrapping the lat around your body even more. The fucking bracelet hurts. I'm thinking of just wrapping the lat around my rib cage. I'm not thinking about pulling. Let the girl work out. I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. <sighs> All right, so the difference between these and the lateral raises is I'm not coming out in the same plane as a lateral raise. I'm coming out as if I'm doing, literally doing a YMCA. Now this is gonna really help with not just shoulder health because of the position that I'm in, but it's gonna really smash my lateral delts more so at the top because that's where the peak tension is, is from here. Peak tension of my lateral delt from here to here. So it's just a different way to target the delts in a different position. Top set of incline. Oh, <laughs> 
that's not going to oh, go oh. oh. Not sure what I got there. I don't know. Those are feeling pretty heavy. Feels fucking good though. All right, now we got my uh, second set. It's not a back off. It's just a second set that's a little bit lighter. Go for more reps, trying to keep the same tempo. These are 125s. I'll probably use 115s. We're going for 12 plus, I think. I mean, the entire premise of it is to increase that time under tension by keeping the same tempo, same execution, but extending that set further. So we got uh, leverage incline next. This thing is heavy, but love this thing. I love how this thing converges. All right, see how this feels. We got two on each side. Pretty fucking burnt out right now, but hell yeah, I got this shit. Okay, keep my elbows suck still here. Oh yeah, we're going up. There we go, here we go. One, two, three. Yeah, let's go. So, second set here. Definitely went pretty fucking heavy in that first set. That was definitely too heavy of a set, but I wanted to push it. Oh, this thing fucking is heavy. Oh, fuck him, fried. Oh. Fuck it, we'll do a back off on here too. Or we'll drop that really, not really a back off. We'll just drop that. Get right into her. Oh, this was way better. Why didn't I fucking put the seat lower? This is some Lance stuff. I don't know who put this music on. Here we go. Oh 
I don't know if it's just me, but on this arsenal, once you like start to fail, and you get to like right here, the fucking squeeze at peak contraction is always the hardest part. And then you start to like, I don't know, man, it feels weird. But I'm not, not a fan of this machine, just by the way it moves. But it does the trick. We got another set heavy like that. One thing I really like to think of when I'm doing something like this, here's out the side view. I want to think about keeping my chest high and fucking kind of externally rotating a bit because I want to keep my chest proud. If I start to go like this, way less chest. Front tilt, rotator cuff, bicep. You're taking the point out of the movement. So I need to keep my chest proud, slam my head back, hyperextend a little bit at the lower back maybe. And think about pushing the bicep into the midline and keeping that chest height as shit. This is the right way to do it. This is what people tend to do. Those tend to go like that. Getting way less chest out of that, not doing yourself really any favors. But hey, don't take my word for it. All right, here we go, second one. I might do a, nah, fuck it, I will. I will do a, a drop set after this one. I can't see I sweat my eyes. Ah, what was that? <laughs> Grab biceps into the chest. Biceps into the chest. Next exercise, done with chest. We got triceps. These are katana extensions or behind the head, cross body extensions, whatever the fuck you want to call them, okay? It's a good ass exercise. Hammers my triceps in the stretch position. Um, really loads it well there. What are you looking for? Bro, it's right there. <laughs> How much did you smoke before working out? I smoked quite a bit. <laughs> See you, bro. Oh, fuck, here we go. Fuck. These are all good. I love these. Somebody asked a question the other day on the podcast, like for the during our listeners Q and A section. Um, it's January, obviously, so people are gonna ask questions about New Year's resolutions. Somebody's like, "Yo, what's your thoughts on it on New Year's resolutioners?" Because our gym has like two X in the first week, you know, and a bunch of people there. Do you think it'll last? A couple years ago, I'd probably be playing a different tune. I was a douchebag. I would only say, without even thinking first, I would talk mostly based upon 
my emotions. You know, I wouldn't really have an intellectual thought before I spoke. And a couple years ago, I'd probably say, fuck them, you don't need a New Year's resolution to make a change. I'm singing a different tune now, and I think that's good because the tradition of New Year's resolutions, the, the essence behind them can be the difference between somebody making massive progress or not make, or, or just like not doing it at all. Yeah, I agree, you don't need a single fucking day to say, hey, I want to change something, you just fucking do it. I agree with that. But that New Year's resolution, nobody should shit on people for that. You know, I was a beginner once too. I set New Year's resolutions. I set goals every single year. And I also, I set weekly goals to this day with business, with bodybuilding, with, you know, relationships, emotional goals, and or spiritual goals, you know, self goals, shit like that. And I think people shit on the term New Year's resolution is way too much. So somebody's walking in the gym because they want to get fit. And it's that time of year where they're fucking motivated. That motivation might come up and it might come down. And there might be just re repetitive peaks and valleys of that, and that's fine, because that's fucking natural. But if everybody in the gym treats the New Year's resolution as like shit, glaring at them, having just a bad attitude around them, that's not doing society and just like culture in general any good, especially within the fitness realm. And I think it's cool seeing it change for the better. But I think people are more accepting and more helpful, and more like, are able to reach out and help those people just get into the gym that are beginners, or even maybe they're not beginners, they're just yeah. trying to get back into it because they've been in the gym um, years before, but they fell out of it. The New Year's, a New Year's resolution could be the difference between somebody going from obese to a healthy weight, or it could be the difference between somebody being super skinny and really not happy with their body and a really bad with uh, the association with food to enjoying food and eating lots of good food and building muscle. People gotta stop shitting on people for setting goals just because it's a certain time of the year. Those people are in the gym just like us. Those people are still working hard, you know, and it's our it's our responsibility, to be honest, um, especially as men in the gym, to see where people need help and assist them. I think that's not just responsibility of men, but I think a responsibility of everybody. Oh, there's my New Year's resolution rant. All right, so these are rear delt flies, rear delt row, if you want to call it on a, just a seal roll machine. I like to do it on here. Um, it really prohibits me from cheating. My hat's sweating, damn. The entire point of these is not to have it be a row, even though it's called a rear delt row. What we want to do is we want to make sure that my scapula, my upper back is not doing this. We don't want this. We, I start the movement out tight, contracting my scapula, and from here, I'm thinking about getting my pinkies out to the walls beside me with a little bend of my elbows, okay, without wrapping my chest and my scapula over like this, okay, and opening it back up. So keeping it tight so I can keep that tension on the rear delts. And I'm just doing a rear delt fly, not out like this. I'm kind of having about a 45 degree angle like this. Maybe a little bit of row into it. But I'm not trying to pull, I'm not trying to pull straight up. I'm trying to push out and then maybe a little pull at the end. Scapula is tight. So, I want to talk about effective reps. There you saw at the bottom, I stopped when I was still moving from a dead hang to about right here, within this arc. The reason being is because the rear delt's a very small muscle. At a dang dead hang, there's not much tension on the stretch when I'm just going from here to here. Not much tension on that stretch. The most tension I'm trying to get is from here out to here. Not from here, way back here. Okay, if I do that, then I'm gonna be getting a lot of back and traps into it. I'm gonna be swinging, protracting, and retracting my scapula. It's gonna be a lot harder to have effective reps and control that weight. So, it may look like I ended that set not to complete failure, but it was failure because my reps were not effective anymore. The rear delt is a small muscle, okay? It doesn't need a massive range of motion. It just needs to be loaded adequately in a stretch and a contracted position, and that repeated over an extended period of time until you exhaust the muscle. Just like every other muscle. It's nothing special, it's just a smaller range of motion. And if I'm getting reps where I barely even feel the tension in the stretch, it's not effective no more. Okay, train your fucking balls off, target the muscle with a very intense mind-muscle connection, build up to an intense mind-muscle connection, and then make sure that you are 
training it hard, and you're not stuck in the loop of constantly recovering that muscle, you know, and you're never gonna grow it that way. Train it hard, let it recover, make sure you have adequate recovery to hit it again, you know, that week, and then keep doing it that way. If you're, I'm not, but I mean, saying train your fucking balls off and train hard. I'm not saying do five sets of this, five sets of rear delt flies, five sets of single arm rear delt flies. I'm not saying that. I'm not mean saying train hard and do that. You're gonna see a fuck ton of volume. Okay, volume has its place. But it's not how I train, it's not how I, my body responds best to it. You know? I fucking love high volume training and getting a massive fucking pump. But to be honest, I get a massive fucking pump anyway when I'm doing higher intensity, lower volume. You know what I'm saying? So there's so many different training philosophies, training modalities, all this shit out there. The war on training modalities is kind of ridiculous in my mind. Just do what fucking works for you. It's just not that complicated. When you're not growing and you're doing all this shit, like doing five sets of bench, five sets of flies, five sets of incline bench, five sets of single arm flies, blah, blah, this thing, your chest is not growing. Think about why it's not growing. You're probably not, it's not your body's not even letting it recover. That could be one of the reasons. Or you're honestly not training and pushing yourself as hard as you can. There's a lot of different things. So that's just a little bit of an insight into how I'm thinking about approaching something like this, a small muscle group, and how I'm feeling throughout the exercise. So hopefully that helps you guys, but yeah, I got one more set of this. Hey, look at that. There's Mr. Fuad. Ending with some laterals. I don't even know if I'm in the fucking frame, but whatever. When I'm doing these, I used to do laterals like this. I used to go right out here. But look at my traps. They're contracting. Okay, and then I used to do laterals like this. Okay, but what are my traps doing? They're contracting. So when I tell people through laterals, think about you're palming two basketballs. You have two basketballs, you set your hands at your side, okay? The basketballs are gonna hit your thighs in the perfect position. Not in the front, not directly in the side, right in the between, okay, in this plane. Right here, it's a frontal plane. You got scapular plane. You got sagittal plane, okay? Those words, fuck, if you don't know what those words mean, don't, who cares, whatever. Okay, but you want this coming out, not like this, not like this. You want them right here, at about in the angle of your peripherals, all right? Because why I like doing that is I like to push my hips back a little bit. Have my, the thing about taking the, the basketballs and think about pushing out See, look at my traps now. My traps are barely fucking moving, okay, in this plane. So what's that mean? What's working? My lateral delt. That's what we're trying to hit, okay? We're not doing a trap race, all right? Think about taking those two basketballs, palming them out to the walls in your peripherals, all right? And it's gonna really help you feel that side delt and really cap those delts. All right, workout is done, completed. Um, so that was just one of my push days. That was one of my chest days. <coughs> it was more of my quote unquote high impact day, um, which is more uh, chest dominant, a little bit of triceps, a little bit of delts at the end there. Um, I decided to spam my rear, or my uh, lateral delts a little bit more at the end because I thought they could take more work. But uh, it's so fucking easy, you no, know, like just having a plan um, and real because I'm on a 14 day split, so. The first seven day split, which is five training days, and um, that is, has a different emphasis than my second um, my second five training days, which is the um, next seven days of the split. <coughs> and I restart and I just go right back into it. Um, two different emphases, two focus on um, different areas of my physique, but still hitting everything adequately enough throughout the week to make sure I'm still targeting, you know, lagging body parts um, and still making sure that I am, you know, sparking that protein synthesis again once I am recovered. But man, the fucking ease of just, you know, going like just knowing exactly what I've been doing has been fucking working. Um, and realizing that like, yo, I just come into the gym, I have fun with it still, but I have a plan. I know exactly what to fucking do. Um, Cause I got two coaches in my corner. I have my training coach and I have my coach that does my prep and my off season for nutrition and the other stuff. But you know, it's one of those things like, as much as I love training, I'm a nerd for this shit. As much as like I know about training, you know, I don't know it all. But also too, I need to be held accountable as well, even though like I, I consider myself being on plan very fucking often, maybe too much, honestly, to be honest. Because every time I eat off my meal plan, I'm, I get, <laughs> my, my stomach gets all fucked up. 
Um, just like what Fuad was saying on the podcast, he was saying like every time he eats pizza and junk food and shit, his digestion's awesome. But then once he eats clean food, his body's like, yo, what the fuck's going on? I'm the complete opposite. It's one of those things where it's like I want to take this as far as I can, and I've you know I've got the potential to take it as far as I can. You guys don't know that yet though, because y'all haven't seen me since when was it 2021. So it all comes down to do whatever the fuck it takes, you know. Um, and that's something that I preach myself. It's what I preach to my athletes. That's what I preach to my friends. And we all hold each other accountable. That's what I preach to people here at the gym, even if they're not bodybuilders. Do whatever the fuck it takes. And if, if that means that having a structured off season where I got both my coaches in my corner, keeping me account accountable, pushing me to be my best every fucking week, and that's what it means. It's, it's cool as hell too that you know I have some athletes that are also coaches and they're on the same vibe. You know, it's like they're, they're, they're preaching that to their athletes. <coughs> And you know, because they're under my guidance as well, it's just it's a very cool dynamic when you get a a group of individuals that have same or similar goals. If you don't have an environment where it's positive, if you don't have an environment full of individuals that are driven and have a growth mindset and that have their eyes set on big goals and know that they have goals in between there to get there and they're willing to do whatever it takes to get to the, the end goal and beyond. If you don't have that, then create it. You know, and that's what I, it's just like not every city, not every town is going to be, you know, focused on fitness or the, even the, the even smaller niche bodybuilding. So if you don't have that, then that's the opportunity for you to create it. And that starts with just one person. Fucking create a community, create a culture in your gym, create a culture in your area, focus on getting better everywhere else, you know, personal excellence above all else. Um, you know, if we don't have personal excellence, we don't got shit. So it's like personal excellence, you know, say, let's just say personal excellence in the gym. That's gonna do way more for you outside of the gym than just in the gym. 24 weeks out, we're doing a prep series. Um, it's not gonna be video every single week, especially at the start of prep. You know, it's a little bit slower to start, but we're really gonna hammer these home, kind of share with you guys the journey, because, you know, you guys don't really see me that much on YouTube, and I'm taking this opportunity to share, document, and uh, do it more so for myself, to be honest, because it's a, I just love this shit so much. Also take you guys along for the ride, I guess, too. Make sure you download the Hostel Subs app. Make sure you get this dope ass new tracksuit apparel. This shit's my favorite. The quality on this shit is so insane, you guys. Um, like this thick rubberized logo a patch on the side, the embroidery, the stretchy material. Shit's so warm. So make sure you guys are on the lookout for all the new stuff we got coming out. Flavors, new products, new clothing. Oh yeah, that's right. I'm going to see you motherfuckers at the Arnold. I will be at the Arnold. We're gonna, I'm gonna be at the hostile booth to meet all you guys. I'm gonna be there at the booth all three days from to start all the way to the end. I'm gonna be at the show to support my boy Samson and it's gonna be super cool. So I'll see you guys at the hostile booth. Come swing by, say what's up, get a picture. I wanna meet you guys. When I met you guys at the Olympia last December, it was fucking awesome. It was so cool. And it was, it was really, it was just a great experience overall. I wanna thank Fuad and Summer for all that they do um, and just creating such a badass fucking team. So it's gonna be a good ass time. But anyway, with that, I'm gonna stop talking. I'm gonna go home and eat a fat meal and then I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.